Welcome back. This year, U.S. lawmakers have been called a do-nothing bunch. Congress passed only 57 laws. That is the fewest number in the history of the United States. Bianca Davy looks at what they did and what they didn't do for the U.S. economy. When it comes to New Year's resolutions, Washington lawmakers actually seem a lot like the average Americans they represent. But instead of pledges to eat better or work out more, they try to achieve elusive goals like this. So let's set party interests aside and work to pass a budget that replaces reckless cuts with smart savings and wise investments in our future. And let's do it without the brinksmanship that stresses consumers and scares off investors. But once the snow has cleared and all those famous Washington cherry blossoms have bloomed, all hopes of working together seem to fade away. But even with limited action on Capitol Hill, the U.S. economy started showing new signs of life in the first half of 2013. Job gains, along with the strengthening housing market, have in turn contributed to increases in consumer confidence and supported household spending. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve continued pumping $85 billion a month into the financial system. But when Chairman Ben Bernanke signaled the stimulus could be ending soon, it sent markets into a frenzy. Bernanke's imminent departure from the Fed and speculation about who would replace him caused a stir, too. But with autumn in the air, focus on the central bank took a back seat. A heated battle over the budget and President Barack Obama's signature health care law was brewing on Capitol Hill. This deal kicks the can down the road. It allows yet more debt, more deficits, more spending, and it does absolutely nothing to provide relief for the millions of Americans who are hurting because of Obamacare. The fight forced a partial government shutdown that left workers and tourists locked out of dozens of museums and offices. The world's largest economy also came uncomfortably close to defaulting on its debt for the first time ever, making global investors and world leaders incredibly nervous. In the middle of that chaos, President Obama announced his pick for the U.S. Central Bank. He chose the widely favored Fed Vice Chairwoman Janet Yellen. But can it just continue indefinitely? I mean, if the labor market doesn't improve to the point that you reach your target, how long can this continue? Do you agree that there has to be some point at I, which we return to normal monetary policy? So I would agree that this program cannot continue forever. After a sometimes testy confirmation process, Yellen was approved by that Senate panel. The full Senate is expected to vote in early January. Congress was able to pull off a Christmas miracle of sorts. They managed to strike a deal on a two-year spending plan. That means the U.S. will avoid the embarrassment of another government shutdown. At the top of U.S. lawmakers' 2014 agenda, another round of debt ceiling talks. Bianca Davey, CCTV, Washington.